Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we coming in with this week's power. As y'all can tell by the grin on our face, we hype as hell about this <laughs> review. Because we were all like, we see this coming. But yeah. we know they like to just throw a little monkey wrench. Yes. Baby, turtleneck gang, I try to tell y'all. Right, right. We're going to get right into it, though. Yeah, Power Book 2 Ghosts, Season 2, Episode 4. Getting, getting these, these ends. ends, man. I was gonna start right at the gate, be like, this was an excellent episode. It, it kept it kept me on the edge of my seat. And y'all were right, man. Can we think? <laughs> y'all, I, I, I mean, he said it. He said it. Dante said it that Kane is his son. Y'all was right, man. Well, the only thing he didn't say was Kane's name. He didn't say, it, but but because <laughs> hey, we know that he might like as well. To, yeah, people like to play all that too, but he didn't say, say Kane's name. Said might as well. We go. We gonna talk about it though. So we we start off the episode with Carrie. Carrie, she, I I don't know. It's like she just. Ain't learning her lesson. Why in the hell is you in the parking lot waiting on Zeke knowing that there's an investigation going on that they're saying that you and Zeke are in cahoots of killing Jabari, but you still want to meet with him? That makes no sense at all. Yeah, and we knew it was a setup. Right. So the whole time it was going on, we were sitting and we was like, something get ready to happen. And of course, the window breaks and it's Monet. Did not tell you to stop effing my nephew. Because you all you already know that they're trying to pin this Jamari, Jabari murder on him. And matter of fact, this is what we're going to do from this forward on. You work for me now. So you going to find out who killed Jabari so we can clear Zeke's name. And if you don't. And if you don't, you going to have a whole lot more problems than you have right now. Hmm. Fertilizer. Yeah. But we found out this episode that she used to be work for the police too. I was like, "Hey, many jobs? We, job? that. we, we knew, knew that. that. Uh -huh. We knew that way back in the gap." Oh, okay. But it don't well, matter. It don't matter. Well, she worked for the police. She used to work for the police too. So we see that Tariq comes to the office with with uh, Sax and Davis, and reveals to them that the NYPD has the murder weapon that killed Jabari. So Saxon and they was like, so are you trying to say that they are concealing evidence? Bingo. So we're saying that we can use that against them. That could possibly get Zeke set free. Hopefully. What you think? No. You don't think it's enough? <laughs> no. Yeah, because Detective Witten, he 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 got such a hard on to get Zeke in prison because because Carrie did something to him. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, I know what she did. She did that basket weave and she spent the round and went backwards on him. And now he don't know how to handle oh, his life. Oh, man. So, uh, Tariq tells Sax and Davis that, hey, we need to do what we need to do. Anything we need to do to keep Zeke out of jail. Because Zeke is my, is, I got to keep Zeke in school so I can get out of school. And Monet yeah. is willing to pay whatever she needs to pay to keep Zeke out of jail. So, you know, of course, that gets their wheels turning. <laughs> uh, they would have got mine, too. Yeah. So, um, uh, Davis comes to visit Monet at the bar. And she was like, how much? Because you remember last episode, she was like, I don't need no lawyer. I know who you is. We, we don't need you. Now she's talking different this episode. <laughs> I said she, they should have just sang, you're all uh -huh. I need. <laughs> so, he, she was like, well, how much do it cost? He was like a mil million bands. I was like, man. She said, oh, no. <laughs> I say Davis is expensive as hell, but his reasons of charging what he charged makes a whole lot of sense because she was like, nah, it don't cost that much. He said, yes, it do. He said, matter of fact, with that kind of money, we can buy the jurors within a 100-mile radius of here. So basically, if we can get on the news, we can control the thinking of the people like they do now through the news. Exactly. So Which was he brilliant. Even get on, yeah, before you even get on the stand, right. they already have an opinion about who he is and what he can and can't do. Right. So she was like, okay, That's what a million to me. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, so she was like, okay, bet. So she went to go in the safe. No money is there. All the only thing that's in there is the gun. And he was like, is anything there, missing? Uh, so she was like, no, I but I'm going to get you your money. And he was like, you got three days. 
And I was like, how in the hell is they going to get a million dollars in three days? They barely got to connect. They only, the only big money they got coming in is through Tariq. So how in the hell are you going to get a million bands in three freaking days? So immediately she thought that the dude that she hired to put the bars on the window, she had him pinned on the ground. I said, Paul, man. And she have took a pair of channel locks and to pull his ear off. I said, God. No, day. But this is the first time I think we really saw her that ruthless. Yeah, because it's usually just a kill usually shot. Usually get Kane to do that. Mm -hmm. Or kill shots. Right. But like, yeah, they didn't show her, show us her doing that. But yeah, that's a that was a new level for her mm. to me in this episode. So uh, he was like, I don't know who got your money, but I'm gonna get you your money. And he was, she was like, see, like Ninja, you got it twisted. Yeah. You say you don't got my money, but, but you, you can get, get my money. money. Wrong answer. Bow. So I was like, God, darn, man. I should not dig it. Yeah. <laughs> Why should you do that to Deke? <laughs> so, uh, so then we see that Kane comes to Mecca and tell Mecca, hey, I, I, I can't do what we what was promised. I gotta help out my family. You know, Zeke is in some trouble. We need a million dollars in three days. So I, I need to get out here and do what I gotta do to get this money. Hmm. And Mecca was like, I understand. I understand family. But I got a solution. But to I the got problem. a solution. <laughs> We're going to kill two birds with one song. He said, it's this cat named Mahoney that's coming in, invading on my territory. You bust up in there and take all his stuff. Take him out because he got a lot of ends, man. He got, oh, he got a lot of fronts. And he said, anything over 50K, you, you can take it and slide it on over there to help out your nephew. I said, bet. <laughs> I was like, yeah. well, well, darn. I said, can't come in yeah. here. <laughs> I ride shotgun for real. Yep. So, the first thing that Kane thinks was Braylon. Because we remember last episode, well, we, a few episodes back, that Mecca told him the way to get to Tariq is through Braylon. So, he still got Braylon doing all Braylon. this, Braylon, doing all this skit with him. So, he decided to take Braylon, Braylon on the first job. To take out this dude now. <laughs> Braden didn't even know what was going on. But he, he just boy. down. He just down. So they up out, out in front of Mahoney's spot. And this dude rolled up was like, can I help you? <laughs> and Braden was, and Braden like, was <laughs> like, uh, I'm I'm good. So who he, you know up in there? You know up in there. You know uh Rodney, T Rodney, Rodney T Bobby, Bobby, you Rick know Mike. The guys, you know the guys. She was like, get out of here. Yeah, Bobby in there. <laughs> So by this time, Kane had threw something out the window, or somebody threw something out the window. He come out there and shot the guy. But we thought that Braden was going to be like totally like shook. Like, what you got me into? Nah, when he got back in the car, he was like, woo -hoo! I said, the guy doing white boys, man. Hey, white boys is down for that skit, though. Yeah. Except for Trace. That had been Trace. It would been a whole... Trace would have drove him right to the daddy house. <laughs> but we see that Mecca's plan... To get Kane to basically be fake befriend uh, Braden is working. Oh yeah, and Braden is falling into it because Braden, Braden, we know wants to be in the streets. And Tariq, like, no, we ain't got to do that skit. That skit is dangerous. We can just stick here where it's safe at, uh -huh. <laughs> and just get sell these drugs to these rich college kids, and we be good. Mm. Nah, Braden, well, he want to live life on the wild side. So not only did uh, can't have him to do that. He had him also to rob the um not where I say liquor store, the jury store yeah. with him. Because now things are really getting hot for Zeke. Um, because we see the episode oh, where uh Zeke and uh, uh yeah going, uh his brother. <laughs> Nephew cousin. Um, uh Drew. Drew. Uh sitting talking and he was like he saw on the TV that they still, you know, saying that they that he responsible for the murder. That Zeke's still responsible for the murder. So Drew was like, I think I got I a think solution. I, I think I got a solution. So what he ended up doing was he got in touch with Everett, Everett and convinced Everett to post a protest video saying that we ain't gonna play basketball no more until Zeke is exonerated. And I was like, Brilliant. Brilliant, but you know it's kind of. And then they had to go find me attached to it, so anybody that thought that Zeke was innocent couldn't donate money. Exactly. <laughs> I said, go on, run that Coach Carter on them right there. Y'all remember <laughs> Coach Carter and the players did that. So, uh, 
So we see he, he eventually got up with Everett. They had sex. And then Everett revealed to him that after they had got jumped in the bar, that when the two professors down at the school started questioning me, I tried not to tell them nothing about you, but I and may Mark, have brought your name up. Your name. And of course, you know, that just took set Drew, Drew off. Set, set Drew off the edge. And Drew was like, why would you do that? But I'm like, Drew, he don't understand. He, I mean, he's just a college kid. He just, yeah, and he don't really he don't understand, understand what your family is in. Yeah, he either. don't understand that. He was just, he was scared. So he would, he would say whatever he needed to say so he don't have to go to jail. Yeah, he said you're dead. <laughs> he almost saw your life in. <laughs> so, so that laid up. So when he was going back home, this reporter dude was questioning Zeke about, you know, what, what happened and, you know, asked him that he know a thing about, you know, the Jabari murder. Do um you know asking about um Lorenzo, but when he acted about Lorenzo, that's what triggered Drew, and Drew just bam, you don't ask about my family. You don't ever we protect our own. I said, oh, I, I try no. to tell y'all, boy, we 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 talking about Kane. Y'all better watch out for the, Drew. Uh -huh. Drew the, is the getting crazy as hell. The quiet he's getting crazy as hell. And like I always told you, it's the people who don't say much is the ones you need to be watching. Exactly. The ones that run their mouth all the time, they ain't got skit. Right. So I, I was like, maybe maybe Drew can handle the the, the freaking um, uh, because you know Lorenzo want him to take over the business anyway. But I think Drew's starting to prove to us that he might be able to have what it takes to do it. Yeah, because he's level headed. Right. Kane, on the other hand, Kane is is a do boy. Yeah. If what you need done, I got it done. But he don't think it through. Yep. So like I said, Zeke is in the hot seat because from that come to find out that this dude was a dude from this uh this sports thing, a big sports thing with Jamil. What the name her name was Jamil White or something like that. uh what was her name? Jamil Miss White. Yeah, Miss White, yeah. <laughs> that in order for them to not press charges on Zeke, that he have to do the interview. And I was I said, like, oh, God no. no, we already on he couldn't even do the freaking basketball interview at the school. I said, just now go he got to go on national TV. I said, go <laughs> get the handcuffs, go get them. Just throw the key away. He don't need it. So what they decided to do was Monet decided to do was get Tariq to do a dry run. To do a dry run to feed him all the information. I was like, bet. But I said, even in that feeding him the information, we know reporters. Reporters, because yes. I thought it was like right. Right, kind of funny that they that, that they released they the released, questions. released the question to Davis to give to him to prepare for. And I'm like, no, I said they're they gonna th throw a monkey wrench. They gonna they gonna throw a monkey wrench because at first he was doing real good. But I'm mad that they didn't prepare for the monkey wrench. Right, as smart as Tariq is, all this stuff you'd have seen your parents go through, you didn't think that they were gonna throw a monkey wrench. Right, yeah, I wish we knew it. And they threw the monkey wrench on him, started asking him about the Jabari murder, and then started asking him about stuff that he, about the, uh, the about the Ramirez and, and, the, the, and the PBA car and the gun. And Zeke was uh, like, this, this is, this is BS. I don't know BS. I, like, oh, I, yeah. He said, this is BS. We're supposed to be asking about basketball. So that basically effed up that whole plan. <laughs> effed it up. Effed up that whole God darn plan. So now we got Simon Stearns down at Stansfield because you know he's the biggest donor down there. So he got Kerry, Detective Whitman, Tate, um, the dean of the school, and uh, it was somebody, somebody else. It was it? somebody else. It don't even like what Mike Beach said. It don't even matter. The who's who's were in the room. But Simon was down there. So Tate asked Detective Whitman, like, okay. So you got Z Cross is your prime suspect, but this dude doesn't have no criminal record, no. Not even a not a even speeding not ticket. even a speeding ticket. So why is he the prime suspect? And the first thing he said, I have motive. So Hegel uh -huh. Simon Stern was like, okay, so this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna let you we're gonna do a search here for drugs to see if they have any drugs, and we don't find anything significant. You gonna go away. And it's the first thing Detective Whitman said, Well, I don't take no orders from you. He said, Everybody <laughs> takes orders from me. Yep. I was like, You don't know Simon Stern. And he said, pretty much he said, when I have dinner with your boss yeah. this week, yeah. you know, I'll kind of bring that up. Uh-huh. So he <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, Darn Stern. You had to flex on him like that. <laughs> but everybody does work for Stern. But then this spins on around. Now 
Kamal, Tate's brother, is on a case. <laughs> so we saw, you know, a few episodes back that he got a new job as an investigator in the DA office. So now they got him on a case. But we try to figure out now, do you think it was a coincidence he was put on that? Or do you think that was Tate and Stearns? Putting that in motion to put him on there. Or you think I don't know. I want to say I think it's a coincidence. Real facts. I really do. But I don't know. <clears throat> but I would say I don't know it was a coincidence that he on a case. But I'm glad that he there yes. to be able to balance things out. Because we still know when it comes down to the police and black people. You're guilty. You guilty regardless of what's happening. So the first thing that Kamal was saying. How can... This guy be the prime suspect, the same thing. He don't have no criminal history. He started going through the videos and basically was like, how can you put this on this boy? And there's no right evidence. There. It's no ev He at the grocery store, whatever he was yeah. at, there's no proof the that... Bodega, I think. Yeah, but there's no proof that he did it. <laughs> and he's so, right there on camera. Right. Well, he set up and got Ramirez to do it. Well, where is Ramirez? Like, so, have we looked for him? So, yes, yeah, so I'm so glad he on a case to kind of balance balance that stuff out so we see that after that meeting that stern had with uh tate and all them tate comes out and was talking to carrie and carrie kind of put him up on game because she was like ain't you supposed to be the black crusader ain't you supposed <laughs> to be at this time trying to be horrific that we have a black man that's on that's potentially that's not that's innocent and you about to let them go down for something this is your time to step in and help him out so you can win the election. <laughs> She's so manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> but I like it though. Very, very manipulative. And 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 here's the other side of what she was ma manipulative that I didn't think about it. Because you remember now that they're able to do the search at the college. Yep. She was talking to, um, what she wouldn't talk to, um, Kamal was talking to Lauren about the drug. Because your mama, the, the chicks put the drugs in her, in her drawer in her drawer on the last episode. So we already knew that. that, that that's what they were going to find. They was going to find it. So uh, Kamal is questioning her about it. And she was like, they're not mine. They're not mine, but I ain't no snitch. I ain't about to tell you who they are. <laughs> yeah. So Carrie busts in there and try to break everything up. And so she went in and she convinced Lauren to put on a wire so that she could find out who the drugs were and get the people to talk. But remember, she brought up Tariq's name. Yep. Because you remember, she still owes Monet <laughs> to be able to find out who killed Jabari. Right. So I was like, so now, now she's working her. Now she's working Lauren to get that information. Yeah. <laughs> and convinced her to put on a watch wire. Um, I was like, wow. Yeah. All right, so now we see Diana and Effie come up into this clothing store <laughs> because cool. they got some credit cards that they're going to use to buy some, some credit card scan. They're going to use to buy some clothes so they can flip it to get some money. <laughs> and I said, oh, this will be doing now? <laughs> to be able to help out with Zeke. So in this scene, what's kind of crazy was that Effie was... Putting, <laughs> putting Diana on game. Up, up on game. She was like, you know, I ain't jealous about what you and Tariq was doing. But basically, I'm trying to say you some heartache. Don't, don't F, don't F Tariq. Trust me. I know. Because Diana was like, I actually want to save myself for somebody special. I want to she said it ain't Tariq. And <laughs> he said, do that. She said, don't try to do that on some jealousy stuff. Do it because you want to do it. So <laughs> I said, well, what the hell? Effie really did have some feelings for Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she had, yeah. As hard as she is, she didn't show it. Right. All right, so let's go back to um, after Zeke's interview. Monet, that was when Monet found out that <laughs> Kane had something to do with Ramirez's gun being at Jabari's crime scene. Because remember, all that was supposed to have been disposed of. And so she rode up on him, was like, I thought that that was handled. And you knew this all this the whole time, knowing that Zeke is on the line, you would have the information. And he told her then was like, this was all Tariq's idea, Tariq one that took the shot. So he was like, and she smacked the skit out of him for that. And he was like, I hope that you have that same energy for Tariq, because all this was his idea. And so she was like, I'm going to handle him when the come time comes. 
but I need you to go and pull that body up. I was like, I said, whoa. <laughs> and he was like, what? The body up. The body. She was like, right. Because if we get the body, that's going to um, basically make this blow away from uh, off Plus of Zeke. Because the time that when you shot him, um, Zeke wasn't around. That no way that Zeke did it at that time. It, it I can't, was, yeah, because Maveris yeah, was already dead. Yeah, he was already dead. So... But then he was like, well, Guess what, blow back on us. what if that blow back on me? He didn't say us. He said blow back on oh, me. Geez. And she was like, Kane, that was the choice that you made. That you made. And I was like, Monet. So now, you, now you're now you protecting Zeke. Over your son? Right. And you was the one that made this mistake also. So now you want Kane to pay the full price. And then we got to remember also, um, I forgot to talk about this, about when she needed to get that million dollars to pay for Davis. Remember, she went down in to see Lorenzo because she wanted to put up the house. And Lorenzo said, absolutely not. Lorenzo said, absolutely not. We're not doing that, <laughs> which, which I could feel him on that because uh -huh. that's, that's, how, that's how black people end up losing assets. You be putting up your houses and skit to get people out of trouble and then they still end up getting in trouble. And you they ain't got, got no house. house. And they in trouble. And where so. we going to eat Thanksgiving at? <laughs> right. <laughs> where we going to eat Thanksgiving at? Now we got to rent a hole. Yeah. But at, but And then he was like, you know, we need to look out for our family. I was like, dang, you don't care about Zeke, bro? <laughs> he was like, basically, yeah. that's nephew. These yeah. are our children. But I'm like, but nephew ain't got nothing to do with this skit, though. They was the one that did this skit and got him in it. <laughs> when Lorenzo said, I know you about to ask me for something because you, you, your, you got your own, you go about to ask me for something. Some nails, nails on. on. I said, Lorenzo. <laughs> I said, I know she had the balls nails on. That's why, that's what he, that's what he wanted to say. But even then, I, I get it what he said, but it's still not fair because she's the one that's out here having to make all these moves because your time is it's, in jail. Yeah. And now she need to come up with this. And you was like, well, no. Why don't you just get the money from the bar? And she, and she didn't even, she, even she tell, didn't tell him that it got stolen. Because she don't know that who took the money. That's right. Let's lead right into that. And come to find out that Diane was the one that told the money to help pay Davis <laughs> to get her daddy out of jail. Because we saw that when they was meeting about it at the house, she was like, she texted Davis and was like, can we move the money from, from my pops over to Zeke? He said, he said absolutely, absolutely not. not. That's already in motion. I said, dang. <laughs> but I heard Method Man when he typed when he typed yep. it. Absolutely not. Absol absolutely, absolutely not. not. So speaking of Maria Ramirez's <laughs> body, so when uh so, Kane went to go get the body, of course, he went back to Braden to help. And Braden was, and Braden was down. But his stomach couldn't have his. He said, I need a ginger ale and some yeah, salt his tea. stomach couldn't handle it, no. <laughs> so, uh, we see that Monet had got a text from Davis was like, I got the money. You Man, work fast. You, you work fast. And she looking like, um. But we had got confused that when it happened because like, when we saw Braden and Kane robbing the jewelry store, we thought, well, of course, that was money for that, but it was like, they dang. They flipped it that fast. Like, did y'all flip that that fast? And who did you sign it to that right. fast? So, come to find out that it was Mecca. Dante. Dante the one that paid it. So, Monet was like, so why did you choose to come back in my life at this time? And he was like, because I needed to become the man that you wanted, needed me to be. And not the woman that Lorenzo needs need you, you to be. be. <laughs> uh, because she was like, why did you why did you pay it? And he said, I paid it so I can protect our son. son. Then he proceeds to tell her, because you don't need to be out here hustling like that. You I need, need you, you need you just need to be a woman. She said, I am a woman. But what he was saying is you shouldn't be out here making no hustling moves like that. You just come on in here and enjoy the cash that I'm going to make. So basically the life that she, I guess she had when Lorenzo was, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what kind of life she had. But from where they live in, it don't look like it was luxury at all. But he offered her the ticket out the game. Well, a ticket to not be able to hustle, but I'm Let still. Let him I'm, take the risk. Right. But at the same time, I thought that she wanted to get out the game completely. That was the plan for Zeke. So Zeke can make the money so they can get out of the game completely. Now we got Dante offering her basically a turnkey life. All you got to do 
and just be my woman. He ain't no saying about marriage. But, <laughs> but based on these kids, be my woman. I take you from hustling. You have the life that you always want and have the man that you always wanted. And they got the kisses, so yeah. that means yes to me. Yeah. So what we going to do about Lorenzo getting out and these kids? And here's the thing, though. They don't know. They don't know what I'm talking about. They don't even know that that's in motion. It's too bad. <laughs> too bad, baby. Mm. I said Mary had a visitor, or should I say an old friend? Yeah. But wait a minute. <laughs> that's not where it is, y'all. I said, oh, my God, Mary. Dang. Woo! I said, we saw it coming, but we were like, they're going to throw a little twist in on this. Yeah. People were saying that um, Courtney was on there talking about some, no, you know, Kane is a Tejada. I mean, technically he is a Tejada, but what, what the hell was this? Right. I so keep we, telling y'all, Courtney, they talk too much. That's why I don't look at her. Right. And so we're going to end with these two last thoughts right here. We saw uh, Tariq. <laughs> Tariq then got a, then bought a tape from a oh, convenience oh. store. Where Big Mama got two big cases of wine. I, was it the, the was it the frat the frat F R A Z I A Fraser wine? And Jazz came in the store. Guess telling like Big Mama, please don't get all this wine. I ain't got time for you to be drunk oh, all she day. Don't. And she done pushed Jazz on the floor and made her go back out there. So Tariq the file uh <laughs> cuss file custody pay file to get custody of Yaz. Yeah, she unfit. She done rolled up on him. She hot. And was like, the last day, I dare you. You ain't fitting to take gas from me. You ain't getting custody. I see you in court. Because, you know, Tariq got the back end of old boy that's handling his money. Alvin from the Cosby Show. Yeah. He <coughs> And at first he was like, what you going to do with a kid? Tariq said, do you still want to be the handler of my money? Or do you need me to remove you as well? He's like, I, 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 I'll stay on uh -huh. it. I got you. I you got, got you my back. support. You got my support. He said, oh, I like living good and eating all this good food. Right. And then at the end of the episode, we saw that after um, Kane and um, Brayden did the Marie Marie's job of finding the body, that <laughs> that Kane that took Marie's badge Whoop. and put it in there, got doing draw in Tariq's and Brayden's draw, which the plan is coming out perfect. But... That ain't gonna be found That's until until that till that search come. And it looks like it's happening now, so it ain't yeah, gonna be long. That it's gonna happen, yeah. So how did his badge end, end up, up in your drawer and your door? Yep. So yeah, y'all. So y'all get in the comments. Let us know what y'all thought about this episode. But like I do I said, have something. Does the college have cameras? Obviously not. <laughs> because the way Kane come up and through there and yeah. nobody questioning this skit. Diane too. Yeah. Coming up there all anytime they want. Because Monet said, you go ahead and let Drew come up and down in that college because he fits in, not you, Kane. Kane always up at the college. Yep, always up there. Nobody questioning nothing, so nobody's looking at cameras. Like, what is going on? But but I told you, right here downtown, I was I, <laughs> I had a sales that? job one time. Oh Y'all know those books that you buy from the kids where you pay like $20 and they give you like $500 for coupons in it? I was uh, selling that, well, learning how to sell it with this white girl. <laughs> and we was at the VCU here in Richmond going Please around. Let's preface this by saying it was like over 20 years ago. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like 15, 20 years ago. So we, yeah, I was like, what you doing? <laughs> I was like, because they about to judge you. Yeah. So she trying to teach me how to sell this. So we going up and down through the college, going into classrooms, offices, <laughs> teachers coming out, asking us, do we have student IDs? We was like, no, we here selling this and they was like y'all have to leave but nobody ever threatened to call the police they just told us that we had to leave but i knew <laughs> if i had been at that school by myself selling trying to sell that skit they would have called the police so i said i want to say that no you were all of them down college campuses and nothing to happen to you because they didn't do nothing but he didn't have a white girl with him. And on that note, that's going to be it. <laughs> the dirty, dirty sound. Two up, two down. Holla! Woo!